Welcome to Joey's Tech. On this day and from this video, you are going to learn how to solve an amazing matrix problem using dynamic programming. The problem belongs to the lead code series, hence it goes without saying that I have taken it from lead code. The problem goes by the title, count sub matrices with all ones. Without further delay, let's check out its problem statement. You are given a matrix of M by N dimensions. The matrix contains only ones and zeros. You need to find out how many sub matrices exist which carry all ones. If you see this matrix, then various sub matrices of different dimensions exist. This highlighted one represents a sub matrix of two by one, that is two rows and one column. Here is another sub matrix of two by two that contains all ones. We need to find out how many such sub matrices exist. So let us begin solving this problem. But before that, I request you to subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon as that way you will not miss out on any of the videos I release in the future. Observe this element in the matrix. This is a matrix in itself of one by one. That means one row and one column. And if we view standing at this point, vertically then we have another matrix of two by one therefore at this point we have two matrices coming out now let's explore the point below it from this point i can take out three sub matrices containing only one the first one will be one single matrix then this two by one matrix and then this three by one matrix so I see that at every cell in the matrix, we can determine the number of matrices if I add the cell's value to the value of the cell above. Let's do that first. In the first row, one will stay because we have no row above it. This zero will stay as it is also. And this one will stay as one. At this cell, the value will change to two we have already seen that moments ago that two matrices are coming out of this cell. Over here, one will stay as it is because we have zero above it. So no chance of any additional matrix over here apart from this one itself. Last cell has zero, so no use of visiting it. We move to the last row at this cell. The value will be one added to two, which gives me three. So I populate in this cell. Similarly, I will get 2 in this final cell and we need not bother about the last cell that contains 0. At every cell, we now have the number of matrices that are emerging from that particular cell vertically. Now we are concerned about finding the number of sub matrices emerging from every cell on the right hand side in a similar manner. Before that, I start a variable which will hold the count of sub matrices containing only one. So let's start from this one. On the right hand side, we have zero. There is no chance of having a matrix emerging towards the right hand side from here. So for now, I'll assign one to this count variable, which is for this sub matrix only. Let's move to this cell. Here we have zero. So no chance of any matrix here. We move to the last cell in the first row. Here we have one matrix again, but there is nothing on the right hand side. So possibility of more than one sub matrix from here is zero. Hence, I add this one to the current value of the count variable and thus it changes to two. We come to this cell where we have two. Now checking on the right hand side, I see there is a matrix which is a single one by one matrix. So first I'm going to add Two to this count variable that makes the total number of sub matrices to four because of this one we can say that there is another sub matrix of one by two emerging from this cell one row two columns isn't it in that case we'll add one for this sub matrix to the count variable so it becomes five the value of the count variable is giving us five so let's see if we have five sub matrices containing only ones till here. Okay. So this was 
one matrix this was another matrix so that makes it two I got two matrix here so one was the one by one matrix which was here and another one was this one so we have got four and then this matrix of one row and two columns so that makes it five great that means we are going in the right direction now I move to this cell next to it we have zero so we can't have any more matrix emerging from this cell towards the right hand side hence I'll add one for this loner matrix in the count variable which changes its value to six while deriving the count of sub matrices emerging from this cell we simply added one to the value of the count variable but I want to bring your attention to a case for this we'll digress for a while check this matrix out what I'll do I'll add up the value in every cell with the value of the cell above just like we did it for our problem matrix we now shift our focus directly to this cell where there is two and next to it we have three that means you see three sub matrices emerging vertically from this cell like we have two sub matrices emerging vertically from here so like this case if I added this three to this two I'll get five sub matrices that means total five sub matrices emerging from here let's see if that is the case so number one is this matrix itself number two is this matrix number three is this matrix and number four is this sub matrix as you can see we have only four sub matrices not five sub matrices emerging from here hence this addition would have yielded a wrong result to avoid such a scenario we always need to find the minimum value between 2 and 3 and add that value to this 2 this will give us the right number of sub matrices emerging from here pause the video here and think over what I am saying for a moment and you'll understand coming back to our problem matrix at this cell we will hence compare between 2 and 1 to find the minimum value and add that value to the count variable since 1 is already less than 2 hence that scenario was not visible that is why I told it to you explicitly coming to this cell we see that there are three sub matrices containing only ones emerging from here vertically we have already seen them now we are checking if there is any sub matrix that we can get on the right hand side so move along and we find 2 over here just like I explained I will take the minimum between this 3 and this 2 and uh, the minimum between 3 and 2 is 2 so I will add that 2 to this 3 earlier what we did we first added this 3 to the count variable and then added this 2 this time we are doing things a little bit different so I'll add this 2 to this 3 and we'll get 5 sub matrices emerging from here let's check that out first here we have one for this matrix this is number two and this is number three so this matrix is of three rows and one column so three matrix still here we have already seen that number four is this matrix one row two columns emerging from here and number fifth is this matrix of two rows and two columns so now you understand what I was trying to say 3 plus 2 5 what I will do I'll add that 5 to this 6 and the count variable will change to 11 imagine there had been one over here in that case emerging from this cell we would have got another matrix of 1 by 3 1 row and 3 columns what would have we done in that case we got the minimum value as 2 from here that too would have been compared with one over here okay imagining if there was one between two and one we would have got one and that one would have simply been added to this 11 or this five that we earlier got the point is that for every cell we are investigating we need to go all the way till the end on the right hand side until we encounter zero at zero we stop now let's move to this particular cell we are examining it individually on the right hand side we have nothing 
so what we are going to do we are going to simply add this value to the value of the count variable 2 added to 11 makes it 13 and this 13 is our answer 13 is the count of submatrices containing all ones emerging from this problem matrix with this we have come to the end of this video you are going to get the github link of the java solution of this problem in the description box below with this we have come to the end of this video i hope that you found this video interesting and valuable i hope that i was able to explain the solution to you step by step in an easy manner if you have any doubts if you have any questions related to the explanation then do let me know in the comment section i promise that i'll answer them i look so much forward to help you with programming and algorithms and only for this video goodbye and take very good care of yourself